Cherry currently works at the Department of Psychiatry and Department of Neurology of the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, who is currently a principal occupational therapist. So, Mr. Cherry, you're welcome. Now, the floor is yours. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. Okay. Go on, Shay. Oh, I should start. Okay. Oh. Um, Indeed, Mister. Okay. So, good evening, everyone of that is joining us, and I will be talking about stress strategies for children with biting disorders. So, biting is one of those childhood behaviors that can be so very difficult to deal with as a parent. And this makes the parents to reach out to teachers, to therapists, to caregivers, to other people alike, in order to help them with this problem. From my experience working with children, I found out that it's usually a stressful and anxiety provoking having a child that bites. Even as therapists, when you are in the therapy session with the child and the child continues to either bite himself or want to bite you, the therapist, it's something that calls for concern. And we have children that they would even chew their clothes, some will chew their sleeves, some will even bite the fingers, bite the inside of their elbow. They do all these behaviors are behaviors that are not welcome in the society, especially if the child is above three years old. Uh, so this is what we'll be discussing today. Um, let's start from the beginning. Babies and infants, they typically put things in their mouths. They use this as a way of harming themselves. And as they get older, they use their mouth to explore the world. You can see them using the mouth to identify the texture of an object. They can even use the mouth to check how heavy an object is or how soft the object is. So they use their mouth for different situations. But all these behaviors are expected to reduce and finally stop when the child is getting to two years old. Okay. Or let's, be, let's put it to two and a half years old, thereabouts. But if this behavior does not stop and it extends to two years old, four years old, five years old, then it becomes a source of worry to the parents. So before we talk about the strategies that we'll be using, let's look at what that have been the cause for this. What can be the cause for children biting themselves or biting other children? So, we'll look at, there are four areas I want us to look at that might be the reason. And because once you know the reason for why a child persists in such behavior, you'll be able to come in as a, as a parent, as a therapist, as a teacher. The first is sensory seeking. Okay. This is when the child is seeking for sensation. So he or she puts object in the mouth. He or she chew on his clothes. He or she bites people around him. In order to seek for sensation to the mouth. So they are seeking for sensory. They are seeking to know what is going on. And this might make them to resort into those behaviors as we are dis as we have said earlier. So okay. the reason might also be due to developmental delay. Okay. Like I explained earlier, a child that engaged in this behavior should be by the age of one, one and a half, two years old, this behavior should have stopped. But due to the fact that there is a delay in their developmental abilities, 
this baby might persist to three years old, four years old, five years old, and so on. For example, we look at the chronological age and the developmental age. Okay. So now, wise, if the child is five years old, but developmentally is still like 1.5 years old, then we will expect this behavior in such a child. Okay. Physically, we are looking at the child that this child is already five years old, six years old. Why is it behaving this way? But developmentally, the child is still between age one and two years old. And because sense in, using mouth to seek for sensation is part of the behavior in those age, that's why the child is beating it. Over time, the child will outgrow it. When the child developmentally gets to maybe age three or age four, which chronologically the child might be seven, eight years old, that's when the child will outgrow it. And that's why we see some children, even though they are engaged in this behavior, even without therapy, they ended up stopping that behavior because it is when they are developmentally at that age. So okay. that's another reason. Another reason we'll be talking about is sensory overload. Sensory overload might make a child to also engage in this behavior. What do we mean by sensory overload? That is when the sensory input that the child is receiving from the environment is too overwhelming for the child to cope with. Okay. For individuals, for children, for adults, we have a way of segmentally arranging all the sensations, all the sensory that we received from the environment. For example, I'm live here. There's a background commentary, photo commentary running in the other flat behind me. Uh, Okay, I think I saw someone said she can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Well, I can hear you. It's probably Rosemary's network. Okay. Rosemary, the network. Please check out and try to log in again. Well, sorry yeah. about. So, like I was saying about the sensory overload for adults, for individuals, for children alike, we are able to process the sensory input that we receive from the environment we are able to arrange them segmentally i'm live here with Tosin discussing about this there's a football commentary running behind me i'm able to put the football commentary that is running in another flat behind me without letting it interfere with what i'm doing mm. there is a light coming from the tv i'm able to not allow what is showing on the TV to interfere with what I'm doing. Right. So, I might be in a music, I might be in a club, I might, I'm, I will still be able to communicate with my friends. That is yeah. how those sensory inputs in their places. But for a child, especially for a child that is exhibiting some of this behavior, they might not be able to do that. And we have children, especially children with autism, children with ADHD, they might not be able to do this. So what they do is to use their mouth to participate in a behavior like this by biting, by chewing, in order for them to be able to focus. Okay. Instead of allowing whatever they are receiving to interfere with whatever they are doing. Because one of the biggest um, Part that receives sensation in our body is the jaw. So when a child puts some, an object into his mouth and is chewing on that object, the jaw muscles is sending a signal to the brain. So it allows the brain to focus at that particular moment on the jaw, on what is going on with the mouth. So instead of allowing other things that is happening in the environment to interfere with whatever the child is experiencing, so the child is able to focus on what is going on in his mouth. So that okay. is why I mean by sensory overload. So when a child is experiencing sensory overload, he or she puts an object into his mouth. So that object might be biting. It might be either mm. biting there or biting other people. That is trying to pass a message across that I need to focus. This thing is becoming too overwhelming for me to bear. So that's another reason why a child might engage in this 
kind of behavior. Another okay. issue might be as a result of dental issues. Maybe the child is still is having a problem. The child is going there might be infection in the teeth calling for attention. Then the last reason my also... So you mean problems with eh? dentition or just with the teeth generally? Problem with but you were talking about the teeth. I wanted to get exactly what you were saying. Oh, okay. So what I was saying is that there might be a dental problem with the teeth. It might be an, okay. there might be an infection with the teeth that might okay. make the child gum to seek for sensory input. So okay. such I need to visit the dentist as a result. And the last reason my which is not the last reason, but for my own observation might be the last reason is what we call PICA. PICA, P-I-C-A. Okay, Pica. It's a medical where okay. a child eats both edible and non-edible foods. The child is okay. unable to distinguish which food, which items I'm allowed okay. to put into my or not. So that child might engage in such behavior. So these reasons are some of the reasons why a child might engage in biting behavior. Now, it is okay. late for us as parents, as teachers, as caregivers, as therapists to understand why the child is engaging in this behavior. So, we need to be very, very observant with the child. We need to look at the pattern of the behavior. When does okay. this behavior happen? How often does it happen? The frequency. What you got this behavior? These are things that will let us know why this child is engaging in such behavior because without those reasons we won't be able to know why this why the child is engaging ah there's one more reason why i didn't mention that is okay. when the child is frustrated when the child is anxious when the child is in a stressful situation okay or the child is angry okay so the that an as emotional a first. yes okay. emotional first. So they also use that as a form of calling for attention that either they are not pleased with whatever is going on or they are angry with whatever is going on. So it's, it's also a call for attention that look at me, I'm angry, I'm angry. So and that is when they bite. They can, like we said, they can either bite themselves or bite other people around them. So okay. let's move. I think we've spent so much time on that. So let's move on to strategies that we use to address all this behavior that I identified. The first strategy is movement. That is when a child, the child should be engaged in what we call movement therapy. It can be running, it can be walking, it can be jogging, it can be crawling, any activity that involves movement and help the child. Okay. Because what happens is that these activities use the joints, the ankle joint, the knee joint, the hip joint, the elbow joint. And these are where we have what we call the perceptions. The perception is the awareness of things in space. So when the child engages in all these activities, he or she is able to redirect his focus into other areas so the sense in the sensory issues that he or she is having is being directed to other areas so he's getting the necessary feedback from all those other things rather than using the mouth as okay. a form of looking for these um, sensations okay the other activities that we also engage the child is what we call every work activities. Every work activities are activities that in, in, involves resistance. And because of it's also similar to all the movement activities, resistance plays much effort on our joints also. For example, when you pull objects to yourself, mm -hmm. the object is resistance. So the more you, you are pulling, the more sensory you are getting from that activity. Right. 
And when you push also, the more you are pushing, the more resistance you are getting, the more sensory you are getting from that activity for the child. That's also mm. provide some proprioceptive and vestibular inputs. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. You can also you can also engage the child in climbing, swimming, participating in talk of war. All okay. these activities provide resistance to the child and it helps the child to redirect his focus on instead of using the mouth, you will rather engage in all those and he or she will get the similar effect. Right. He will get in his mouth. He will okay. get this from these activities. Another activity another activity that we would also talk about is what we call the oral motor activities. Okay. The, that the, for, the fact that the child is using the mouth for engaging in all this mal maladaptive behavior. So it is just right for us to use the mouth to engage in acceptable behavior. Okay. So what are the other acceptable behavior? Like blowing of balloon, blowing of bubbles. These are acceptable behavior for a child to so participate in. So the more the child participates in that activities, the better for him or um, okay. we, we also encourage at this point we encourage the child to use straw to okay. drink what instead of drinking directly from the cup. And if I think you want to use a cup, it, the cup should have this sucking part, which okay. will enable the child to be sucking water from the cup. All right. So then there's this um, instrument called harmonica. Okay. The child can also use that. Then okay. we also have what we call the sea vibes. I would have wished to show some of these images of for this. Item so that we can see the sea okay. vibes also provides sensory to the so it is used to stimulate the muscles in the mouth also. Okay. Then we also have what we call the vibrator toothbrush, the vibrating toothbrush. So instead of the normal toothbrush that we use, we can use the vibrating toothbrush, which will provide enough sensation to the gums, to the teeth, to the jaw, right. to the heart sheet. So the yeah. child can be using that to brush instead of normal. Such okay. that we can use. Then we also have we also encourage eating of country foods. Okay. So carrots, vegetables, apples, banana, grape. These are how about plantain? Um, I love plantain chips. <laughs> yeah, plantain chips would have been good, except for the fact that for for children with AGAG, we might not encourage plantain chips due to okay. the content. Oh, have aid their energy, and this will also give them ability to engage in a lot of tasks. So okay. that's it. But for children that doesn't exhibit that, we mm. can. They can use plantain chips. Okay. So okay. They can use that. Um, we... There is one I have not mentioned. Massaging okay. of the jaw muscles. Because I was just going to ask you that. So we have to, because like we said, we are providing um, sensory feedback to the mouth. So we have to massage the jaw muscles very well we help the child to massage it this will provide calmness soothing effects for the child so these are some of the things that he or she will be getting from biting from chewing other items so we will be providing that for the child and we should let the child know that especially when they are angry and they engage in this activity in this behavior we should let them know that that is not the right way of engaging in that Rather than that, we can also get them what we call this um, disease tube, chewy tube. Okay. So, for them, or not that anytime they want to bite, we employ them to pick up the chewy tube and bite on that. Rather than biting on people, biting on their peers, they should be biting those chewy tubes. Those chewy tubes also come with 
the Z, Z vibes also. We can get them either separately or we can get them with the Z vibes. These are some of the strategies that we can use. But we should, all, we should know that you must be very observant. You should know why your child is engaging in such behavior before you'll be able to know what to do to the child. Mm. Thank you. I, I hope I'm audible enough and we are able to hear everything we have said so far. Yes, you are, Shay. Thank you very much. Are you done? Yes, yes, I, yes, I'm done. Oh, okay. I Thank you very much. I'm, I would like to give you a round of applause here myself. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was very uh, um, short and um, very, very educative as well. I mean, I mean, do we have questions? I mean, if you have questions, you can just type them. And then I'll try to um, I'll try to read them out to show you if he's unable to view them. Okay. But just as we're waiting, I wanted to ask you first. Um, talking about biting disorders and all of that, I think the first thing I got from what you were saying that uh, um, this thing is not peculiar to children with autism alone. I mean, it can be can be no, no, no. autism yeah, alone. Yeah, then. Uh... It's not mm -hmm. particular to them alone. Okay. We have, we have, like I said, we there are, there might be a bit of developmental delay in any areas of our lives. So there, okay. we have children that, even without any issues, do not work until two years old. Like right. I, I have a, a family friend that we grew up in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. This child. Or JJ Okosha, but the JJ Okosha did not work until two and a half years old. Wow. Wow. So, uh, they have normal children that suck their thumbs. So, this strategies can also be used for those children too. That's so, it's great. not similar to autism and ADHD alone. That's great. And so, I was going to ask again that at what um, age should we really worry if we see a child biting on their clothes, biting on people, and all of that? What should we really well, be done about that? Well, the the at two years after after two years, okay, we should be a bit worried. But I've seen okay. children that doesn't have any issue, even till the age of three to the age of four. I think even for myself, I think as at four years old, I think I was still showing on my on my clothes on my sleeves, and I'm not I'm not sure my I'm sure my parents were worried, but they didn't really put too much attention on me. Yeah, yeah, my... So, but I, I think as two years, we should be worried. Like I always said, therapy does not cause any damages. So, whether the child will turn out well or not, whether the child will go it or not, you can start therapy as soon as possible. Once we are worried about any behavior, start therapy. But there are no side effects, right? Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Um, so I think I got a question from Rosemary saying that what what should I'm trying to read the question again, but I think I missed it. Okay, I think I find it. Um, I can find it now. What do we do to children who don't drink water from straw? How can you then help them? I I mentioned so many strategies. So many, so. Right. Thinking from straw is not the only strategy that you use. Like, mm -hmm. it's just about looking for their interests also. If they are not drinking okay. from straw, can, can they participate in bubbles? And then, it I always tell people, it depends on how you present a particular activity to a child that will okay. make him or be interested in that activity. If you, okay. if you present it like a walk for the child, he or she might not be interested in using straw. But if you Present it like a play. and you yourself as a parent, you also use straw just to demonstrate to the child that it's fun. Call the other children that are is it mm, other children to also use straw. Encourage other children to use straw. Before you know it, the child will also want to use straw once you see that other children are using straw also. All right. Please. So I mean Please. it's almost five thirty and we really have to go. Okay, Mr. Shay. But my last question to you would be that can parents do this? Should therapists be sharing some of these strategies to parents of these children? What do you think? When it comes to 
children with developmental delays, when it comes to children with some behaviors, right. there is no way a therapist will be with that child 24 7. And mm. when you want to see a particular behavior, the consistency matters a lot. How okay. many parents can afford five times a week of therapy? How many parents can afford seven times a week of therapy? Or even if it is five times a week, one hour, you spend one hour, two hours, maximum three hours with the child. So you have to incorporate the parent into your therapy plan for you to work. The difference okay. between therapist and the parent is that when a therapist notices a particular situation during one of the activities, he or she knows what to do. The parents don't know what to do. So what the parents should do is to identify such situations. When is the therapist from the can always present. For example, like the drinking of straw. Right. When, you, when you tell the parent to do that and they do that with the child and the child does not want to drink the straw. Right. The parent left helpless. They won't know what to do. So that's when the therapist comes in. So okay. the parents are still taking over the role of the therapist. But in as much as possible, we should both work hand in hand in order to achieve our goal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Shea. Thank you so much. Like I said, it's already 5.30 and we have to run.